What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna to be talking about a subject that took me a while to break down. Today we're gonna to be going over what I would consider to be the best full-size pistols for concealed carry. First off, this is not gonna be a list that includes revolvers, that's gonna be a separate list. Secondly, the guns are gonna to have to be full size. What a surprise, right? A list of full size guns has to be full size. So the guns have to be larger than 4.5 inches. Now, not only did I pick firearms for this list that I felt like had very good track records, very good size to weight ratios, very good overall reliability, durability, but I also wanted to pick guns that were a little bit different as well. There's some 45s, there's even some 5.7s, there's some 9 millimeters, and there's some double action, single action, there's some single actions, and there's some striker fired guns on here. I tried to make this list to be an over encompassing carry list for everybody who might want to be looking into a full size carry pistol there'll be something on this list that fits your niche now you have to understand all these are going to be full size so some of these aren't going to be ultra lightweight guns and in order to carry one of these firearms you're going to need a good system a good belt a good holster but it certainly is doable now, before we get into this list, I do want to mention my Patreon supporters. My Patreon supporters sponsored most of the guns on the channel and a lot of the ammunition. We appreciate you guys a lot, and we try to be the most honest gun channel on the internet because of you guys. So if you want to support the channel, that's the best way to do it. Go to the link in the description below. Also in that description is a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. Those kids could really use your help. It's a youth shelter. So please go down to that link and donate to those kids. And finally, I do want to mention the Gundies. If you're interested in voting for me for best gun reviewer, I'd really appreciate it. You can vote once a day and that link will also be in the description. Now, in the video, these are my opinions and I based these off some of the information that I've looked up, but mostly the data that we have from all of the reviews that we've done on these pistols. I've got a lot of trigger time on most, if not all of the major brands of handguns. And if you wanna see those reviews, you can also check them out through my channel. So let's get into it right away with number 15, and that is gonna be the FN45 Tactical. Now the FN45 Tactical is a firearm that I haven't had in quite a while but I did have a lot of fun while I had it it has seen a lot of military use it's seen some uh, police use and overall it is judged as a very reliable durable robust platform and it's personally one of my favorite to shoot the 45 caliber in because it has such soft recoil and because it has a pretty good trigger as well it's one of the first guns that really came with a lot of accessories which is kind of standard today so if you're looking for a classic that has a lot of good features to it it's not too heavy at around 30 33 ounces and the gun comes in about seven or eight hundred dollars today you can get a gun straight out of call of duty that you can carry pretty comfortably that packs a wallop for a pretty good price so i had to put the fn 45 on the list now in at number 14 is going to be the first cz on this list if you follow the channel or not you know i like cz's and the cz p09 is certainly going to be a choice for me because i really love the p07 and this is the full size version of that it is a double single action pistol with a full five inch barrel very lightweight slide very low reciprocating mass very very low recoil impulse the double single action trigger it makes for a very good platform to use for appendix carry or any system of carry that extra length on the trigger on the double action makes it a lot safer of a gun for me personally to point at my junk so that's why i like it super reliable super durable and it's actually pretty cheap as well coming to assume between 400 and 500 dollars it's one of the best buys on the list considering the back straps and all the modern features you get out of that plus these guns are stupid reliable low recoiling accurate and they come in at around 29 ounces so even for a large gun they're very very light and you can carry this pretty comfortably if you're a, a slim uh, taller type of guy like me and I personally love the gun for that in at number 13 and only because it's not very proven yet we've got about 700 rounds for this this is gonna be the only gun on the list that we haven't got through a full review this is gonna be the Smith & Wesson M&P 5.7 now this gun came out a few weeks ago but I've been so impressed with it I've been shooting it and shooting it and shooting it the gun is phenomenal it has a 23 round capacity with the 5.7 caliber but it only weighs about 27 ounces overall the capacity to size to weight ratio on this gun is incredible it's Reliable. It has the lowest recoil of any gun on this list and any gun in the full size category that I've ever fired. Comes with a dot mount, comes with a threaded barrel, comes with a pick rail, comes with slide serrations, a improved texture on the grip, and an awesome trigger as well. And you can get into this gun 
for about six to seven hundred dollars which is really incredible considering not only is it new but the performance that you get out of it like i said the only reason why it's so low on the list is because it hasn't been proven in military and law enforcement track record quite as much as a lot of the other ones and because many people haven't got it and reviewed it yet and vetted its performance that being said this gun right in front of me is spectacular and it's pretty cheap too in at number 12, we have kind of an odd pick, but hey, it's my list and I love this gun. We have the HK USP Expert. Now, I don't think anybody will deny the HK USP is a proven, reliable, durable design. It arguably might be the most reliable pistol ever made. And the USP Expert is the five inch version of that that comes with a lot of features that I really like. Now the price is gonna be a little bit above the USP, but you get quite the performance for your price upgrade as well. Now along with the five inch barrel, you get the O-ringed barrel, which makes it super, super accurate. This gun is capable of hitting man-sized targets at 150 yards and beyond. The cold hammer forged barrel is excellent. That O-ring seal makes it even more accurate. It's got adjustable target sights on there that are very cool, and it's got a double single action trigger very similar to the uh, p09 which we talked about earlier which is a system i like a lot for concealed carry now this one comes with a safety but i believe you can get them with a decocker as well we also have a european style ambi mag release so if you're right or left handed it makes no difference the gun will work we also have a 15 plus one capacity now it's a little bit lighter than some of the other guns but grip is going to be one of the things that shows a lot and if you carry this gun there won't be quite as much to print which is very nice so it's safe it's accurate it's unbelievably reliable it's got good capacity and it's got pretty awesome features with a great trigger now the hk usp expert does come in at a higher price than a lot of the other guns that we've done so far at about $1,200, but it brings kind of a special forces cool factor with it as well, and a little bit upgraded performance over some of the others, so I think it deserves this spot on the list. <clears throat> now, number 11, along the lines of paying a little extra for performance, we have the SIG P226. Talk about military track record along with the USP. We have the 226 here, which was the Navy SEAL pistol for a very long time. One of the most tested, reliable, and durable pistols of all time in its own right. The 226 has a lot of features on it that might even put it above the USP for me. Number one, it's got an aluminum frame, which just feels good when you shoot it, adds a little bit extra weight. They have single action designs of these guns that have amazing triggers, and there's lots of different versions of the 226 as well. SIG is really good at putting out different versions of their guns, and there's like 20 of the 226, making it a very easy platform to get into, mix and match, Pick your accessories, pick your different parts, depending on which one you like, which one you don't. Options are pretty much endless with the 226, and that's pretty nice. This is actually the pro version here, which is gonna be a little bit more expensive, but the 226 does start at about $1,000, and because of the aluminum frame, it's a little bit heavier at about 34 ounces, but certainly uh, light enough to still carry, and many, many people carry these guns today because of the accuracy, reliability, and just the overall performance you can get out of the gun. Now, in at number 10, we have the Canic Meta. Now, I considered putting the Rival or the SFX or even the new steel frame on this list because Canic comes to the game with a lot of features for a low price and they're pretty reliable too. However, I decided to go with the Meta simply because that's kind of the tactical defensive version of all the guns that I like. And we do also have a thousand round review of this gun. Now, this gun comes with a five inch barrel, comes with a pre cocked striker trigger, very similar to the P99 series of guns. We have a low weight on the slide mass, making it a very low recoiling gun. The grip is very good, well textured, comes with a magwell, and it comes with the interchangeable back straps, plus tons of plates so you can throw a red dot on there if you want. It's also got white dot steel sides but you can get versions with tritium sights and it does have an optics or a light rail on it for you to put a light on it, use it for a home defense gun as well. All these guns, not only are they full size carry guns, but they can also flex into home defense guns as well. I should have mentioned that. Now the Canic is really nice because not only does it have all these features and it's super, super accurate, but the main feature of the gun in my opinion is that you can get these with all these features starting out between five and $600, which is really nice. And on top of that, they're unbelievably lightweight, just like the Walter P90 at a total of 26 ounces for a five inch gun that has a capacity of 18 to 19 rounds. Very, very cool, great capacity to size to weight ratio, the recoil control is on point, and there's not much that you can hate about the Canic Meta series. Now in at number nine, 
speaking of Call of Duty, we're gonna get into maybe a little bit of the exotics, and we're gonna talk about the FN 5.7. Now the FN 5.7 was, I believe, the first handgun to be released in the 5.7 caliber, modeled after the FN P90, which is uh, kind of a PO PDW subgun. Uh, they actually took the 5.7 round, put it in a handgun, and that's where I think it really shines, because in a handgun, you can get a lot of capacity, you can get low weight, and you can get low recoil all in a nice little package. This is actually the Mark III, this is the new version of the 5.7, but the old one will work all the same. Very reliable, very durable, very robust. On top of that, you're gonna get a crazy good capacity of 20 plus one, and you're gonna have it for a very light weight of around 21 ounces, which is incredible if you consider how thin, how light, and the capacity to recoil ratio that you get. It's pretty awesome. You get tons of performance with this gun. You get a lot of cool factor. It looks awesome as well, and it's easy to carry but you are gonna pay a little bit for it at about the thousand dollar price point it's gonna be three to four hundred dollars more than the Smith & Wesson and they're gonna have pretty similar uh, features and size and weight but I put this one ahead of it just simply because it's been more time tested so because of that we got into the FN but if you don't want to pay the extra money always feel free to get the Smith now at number eight one of my personal favorites and my home defense con we have the staccato P now the Staccato P is a double stack version of the classic 1911, a 2011 if you will, where you can get a good bit of capacity all the way up to 27 rounds if you so choose with a very lightweight single action design. 34 ounces, 4.4 inch barrel, and all the bells and whistles you could possibly imagine. Mine is the Optic Ready version, which is gonna run you about 500 more, but it comes with uh, iron sights and the optics mount ready to go. Picatinny rail for lights, I slip on an extra 100 all the time, and then a solid grip as well with a manual safety and a grip safety. It's got a good magazine release, it's got a beveled magwell, and everything about this gun is slick, smooth, fast, and reliable. A lot of people think of 2011s as race guns, and they absolutely are because of their performance, their uh, recoil, their accuracy, but the Staccato P flexes more into the tactical line, and it's made specifically for tactical use, even to people like Texas Rangers and lots of law enforcement are picking these up as well, because not only are they unbelievably fast, but they're very durable and reliable as well. If you wanna pay extra money to get super high performance, I would consider this one of the first high performance guns that we have on the list that would super flex in a carry because it's only 34 ounces, and it would be one of those do-it-all guns that you could save up for, get, and you're gonna be happy with whether you're competing, whether you're gonna be using it for home defense, plinking, or carrying a gun. In at number seven, I had to pick a Beretta, and if I'm gonna carry a full-size Beretta, I'm gonna go with the M9A4. Everybody who follows the channel forever knows I'm absolutely head over heels in love with this gun. I like the M9 platform, and I would consider the M9A4 to be the best variation of that. We still get that standard five inch barrel, but this one's gonna be threaded. The difference is we also get the new Beretta optics mount, we get tritium night sights, we get the uh, new version of the decocker, which is much harder to throw down, we get front and rear slide serrations, a Picatinny rail, this bang and bronze color. I have uh, lock grips on here, G10 lock grips, and it also comes with an extended magazine release and an upgraded trigger, which is very nice. This is running a G model, so the old Berettas, you could put the safety on it and it would stick, whereas this one, no problems at all. Even if you run the slide and initiate the decocker, you can still pull the trigger and it's gonna work just fine. Uh, I love this gun a lot. We have a thousand rounds through this for the review, and then I have a thousand on top of that now. I use this as a platform to test accessories. So I got a lot of rounds through this. I love the trigger, I love the ergonomics, I love the reliability. And for around 900 to 1,000 dollars and 33 ounces, you can get yourself into this, and you would have an extremely formidable full-size carry gun. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the Beretta M9 or 92. I'm just saying this one's better. All right, in at number six, we have John Wick's gun from the first John Wick. I'm gonna be talking about the H&K P30L. Now, the P30L is one of my personal favorite guns as well, because it's a polymer framed, very lightweight nine millimeter pistol, but it has a double action design, and it again, made by H&K, has similar uh, lineage to the USP, where the P30 is just stupid reliable in almost every condition. It comes with a lot of accessories, including a pretty good trigger. You can get different versions of the trigger as well. I have the LEM version, and I absolutely love that, uh, but they do have double single action and all kinds 
of other stuff. A lot of options, they come with grip panels so you can change the panels out. And the size to weight ratio is super on point with the P30 at about 25 ounces, which is very light. And you can start off at about $700. Now you have to be a double single action guy to really like the P30, but you can get used to it. Not only does the double single action make it safer for appendix carry, but it also allows you to do a little bit better dry fire practice at night without having to worry too much. You can work under trigger control and you'll be a better marksman. So not only do you get a lot, of, a lot out of the gun, it's very reliable and durable. It's a 4.5 inch pistol with 26 ounces, so it's a great, very comfortable full-size carry gun. In at number five, we have the M&P 2.0 series. Now this is actually the metal version, which is also a great version, but I'm really talking about the polymer version, which you can get into for a little bit cheaper. The metal version is awesome, and they're about an ounce more, and they're a little more price, about maybe $200 more. I think the regular M&P comes in at a super cheap five to $600, and they weigh about 28 ounces. This one's gonna be a little bit more, about 30, but they do come with the same features. Got an awesome striker fired trigger, it's got good fish scale serrations, four and a half or five inches are available. They do have steel sights out of the factory and they do have optics cuts and they do have ambi controls, which is awesome. Removable back straps and they do have a beveled magwell and they do come with a standard magazine capacity of around 17, but you can get uh, higher capacity magazines as well, obviously if you choose. Probably the second most popular gun in the country behind the Glock. The holsters and accessories and everything are gonna be available for the M&P. The track records are also excellent with military and police, and they're very reliable, very robust, and if you've ever seen Grand Thumbs ice test or mud test, I even left one of these outside for three freaking months and it still worked with the magazine I left it in. I mean, these are one of the most reliable striker fired pistols ever made. They come from a great American company and you can get them really cheap as well. Hard not to love the M&P. In at number four, we have possibly my favorite gun. We're gonna be talking about the 1911. Now any 1911 will really work for this list as long as it's reliable because there are 1911s and there are reliable 1911s. This is my Wilson Combat CQB and that's what I'm gonna put on the list because this is the one I trust. Now this is gonna be the most expensive gun on the list, coming at about $3,000. But what do you get out of it? Now you get American craftsmanship. You get one gunsmith making this gun for you by hand. And not only do you get kind of the pride of carrying that and knowing that this is the longest running service pistol of the United States military, this gun kind of ran through World War I, World War II, two world wars, and you get the overall lineage, history, and track record, but you also get the greatest single action trigger ever made. You get a very reliable design. This is a nine millimeter, but you can also get them in 45. The nine has uh, 10 plus one, and the uh, 45 usually is seven or eight plus one. Is it good enough capacity for carry? I think so, because you can always reload pretty quickly. Now the nice thing about the 1911 is not only the trigger, but since it's a single stack, it's a large frame pistol, which you can handle the recoil very easily, but it's very thin as well, so if you do carry it, you don't notice quite as much as maybe some other pistols do. It's also very heavy at 42 ounces, and there's a lot of drawbacks to the 1911 that people don't like, but there's a lot of really good things as well. If you're a trigger guy, if you're a history guy, if you like the thinness of the 1911, this might be your favorite pistol to carry. However, if you grew up in the generation of Glocks and you only appreciate polymer pistols, the 1911 is probably not gonna be for you. So just keep that in mind, pick one up, and if you pick it up the grip and it feels like home, guess what, you're an American. In at number three, now we're getting to the big boys. We have the CZ P10F. If you look at the size to weight ratio, 27 ounces, 4.5 inch barrel, you can get these for about 500 bucks. You get not only a track record of excellence with CZ, you get a gun that's run out of the factory so you don't have to worry about breaking periods. You get a phenomenal striker fired trigger. You get great sights out of the box, a very low bore axis, very high up on the gun so you get low recoil. You get grip panels, you get a pretty decent grip of which I have down grips all over because I love aggressive texture. Uh, good magazine release and a very comfortable trigger guard. One of the things about Glocks and some modern pistols, they have kind of a, a nub here on the trigger guard that I absolutely hate, and the CZP 10F fits my big hand super well. We have ambi controls on the gun, and we do have 15 or 2,000 rounds for this gun, with I believe no malfunctions. Super reliable, super accurate, and shockingly fast. This is one of those guns that you can shoot faster than you expect that you can, kind of like you pick up a 2011 for the first time, and you're like, ooh, this is fun. 
this gun is fun as well. So if you haven't tried one, make sure to check it out. The price is right, the weight's right, the reliability is right, and with all the features packed in for such a low price, I couldn't put it any lower on the list. Now number two, a gun I would consider probably tied with the P10F, we have the Walter PDP. Now the Walter PDP always scores some pretty high points on my list, and that's because I've used it in my personal life a lot. I like the PDP because it has a good magazine release with probably the best trigger on the market besides maybe the Canon. Remember I said that it had the Walter P99 Precock Striker Trigger? Well, so does the PDP, considering the PDP is an updated version of the P99. We have great aggressive serrations on the slide. We have a pretty awesome optics mount, steel sights out of the factory, a full Picatinny rail, and not only does the PDP have a 4 inch, a 4.5, and a 5 inch, but all the slides are interchangeable with the lowers as well, making it pretty universal and pretty cool. The recoil uh, uh, impulse on this gun is on point, and the weight is awesome at 26 ounces, and you can get all these features for about five to 600 bucks, making them all comparable with a lot of the other guns that were much lower on the list as far as specs, but you're gonna be able to get a better trigger and overall a little better performance as far as accuracy goes with the PDP. Now, before I get into number one, we're gonna do a few honorable mentions. Man, this video could have been a top 50, to be honest with you, but I'm only gonna list a couple, and if you wanna see more later, we can do that. Now, one of the guns that almost made it on the list is gonna be the FK Brunel PSD. Now, that gun comes in 7.5 FK Brunel, but you can also do caliber conversions to lots of other uh, calibers. The reason why I like it so much is it's 42 ounces, just like a 1911, but it packs the punch of a small rifle round. It has low recoil, has high capacity, and it's one of the only guns on the list that if you had an abominable snowman outside your house, you could take care of it no problem. There's obviously the CZ75, what a classic. I just couldn't leave it on the list considering I think that nowadays it's a little outdated. There's more modern versions of it like the P09 that you're probably gonna like a little bit better. And then finally we have the Browning High Power, the OG, one of the greatest pistols of all time. But again, maybe just a hair dated by comparison to a lot of the pistols on this table. Now, number one. Have you guessed what it is? Yep, that's right. It's the Glock. How could it not be? I didn't want to subvert your expectations. I just wanted to tell you what most likely the best full-size carry pistol is. That's the Glock 17. The Glock 17 and the Glock 19 and the Glock 43X, I believe are still the most popular pistols in the United States and in the world, and for good reason. They have a track record of reliability and durability that beats mostly every other pistol. Their accessories, holsters, availability, mags, everything is interchangeable, and on top of that, they're super available. It is in every movie, every TV show, every video game, and there's a reason for that. It is a striker fired pistol with a polymer frame. It's ultra light at about 26 ounces. It's got a four and a half inch barrel, but you can throw a five inch slide on there as well, the Glock 34 slide, or you can even do the Glock 17 L slide if you so choose. The modern guns like the Glock 47 can even accept on a full size frame, they can accept the 19 slides and parts as well. So if you're interested in that route, you can go that way. Uh, holsters, sights, and everything you could possibly imagine is available for this gun. And it's probably one of the most modular guns on the planet. And it's certainly the most proven handgun, not only on this list, but in the world. I would consider maybe this and the 1911, but it's certainly in the last 30 years, everybody has moved to the Glock. Now I know the US military decided to go with the P320 instead of the Glock, but that was actually for a lot of different reasons, not just performance. If it were me and I had to carry one full-size gun forever, and simply because of the magazine interchangeability with other people, it would be easy to get mags and ammunition if you were in a fight or something like that. And on top of that, the lightweight and just the overall ooh, warm, fuzzy feeling I get when I carry a Glock, just makes me feel comfortable, it makes me feel protected and confident. Just because of its track record, its history, and its lineage, the Glock 17 has to be at number one. That being said, if it's not your number one, I understand. There's 14 below it that you can also choose from. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. Whew, if that wasn't the hardest video we've ever filmed, I don't know what is.